So the University of Waterloo Alternative Fuels team, also known as UOFT, has been around since 1996. Our primary objective is to redesign cars to make them greener. So we start with existing cars, modify them extensively to build green cars. Uh, in the past, we've worked on uh, using such technologies as ethanol fuel, uh, hydrogen, uh, we're propane before, um, and now we're building an ethanol slash plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. So the EcoCar program is um, a government slash industry sponsored competition. Uh, 15 schools across North America compete to build a green vehicle over three years. Um, we're all given a 2013 Chevrolet Malibu, the vehicle you actually see behind me. And we're given, like I said, three years to redesign it. Uh, the first year is all about design. We extensively utilize CAD and software tools to design the vehicle. Uh, and the second year we actually implement all of our designs. So we tear the cars apart, we put in all our unique powertrains. And the third year, we refine our car. So we want to build a car that uh, we can basically sell to anybody. And uh, they wouldn't tell the difference between our green car and the regular car. So there's sort of two sets of tools we use. We have our virtual tools, um, and then we have our hard tools. Uh, so the virtual tools are what we use to design, because uh, we don't really want to start working on a car and then have to go and redesign the car again because we made a mistake. So what we do is we use these virtual tools to build everything on a computer. Uh, we can see if they, the fit is uh, correct. We can see if it's strong enough. We can see if it's going to hold up in a crash. Uh, so these virtual tools include CAD. Um, we use some control tools to help developer control software, um, uh, including MATLAB and Simulink, which is a sort of advanced software set. Then we get to build our stuff. So basically, we have all these designs built in virtual world. Then we get to build it in the real world. So at that point, what we use are literally hand tools. So we have saws, we have um, you know drills, we have lathes, we have mills. For some of the more advanced stuff, we use uh, 3D printing, which lets us rapidly prototype and build um, our designs from a CAD world to the real world, literally overnight. We use CNC tools, um, so computer numerically controlled uh, lathes and mills that allow us to get very, very precise and very, very accurate uh, components. Of course, we use welders as well to put everything together. Um, there's a lot of body work we do on the cars as well to get the aerodynamics, so we'll extensive work with uh, laying up fiberglass and carbon fiber as well. Our team is basically almost a 50-50 split between grads and undergrads. Um, the undergraduate students enjoy it because it uh, lets them get out of the classroom and apply some of their knowledge. The graduate students uh, like it because it sort of pushes their, uh, their boundary of knowledge, so they get to try new things and experiment with new ideas. Extensively, you have to have a very good understanding of material properties. Um, for example, if we're going to design a weld or we're going to design a component, we have to understand what stresses the material can take. So a little bit of chemistry is always important to know. Um, when it comes to physics, physics is always a great thing to know, especially when you're trying to figure out um, how things will interact in the crash, for example, or if a certain part will take a certain stress or load, that sort of falls into the realm of physics. Um, if you're ever interested in electrical systems, that's always a very important area for us. A lot of cars are becoming more hybrid and hybrid, um, hybrid electric vehicles. Um, computer and software, that's always key as well. So understanding how to do programming is very important. All these cars basically have you know, up to 50 different computers on board, so understanding how to program and diagnose those are very critical as well. Even beyond the sort of traditional set of science and math, there's always very important to have some hands-on skill. So always being able to you know, work with tools, learning how to use uh, even a wood shop or woodworking class. Uh, taking a metalworking class or even automotive, automotive, automotive class. We try to figure out uh, how much fuel do you use in the vehicle. It's a simple math problem, right? We try to figure out the, the volumetric space of a fuel tank and figure out how much um, fuel we can hold on board. So those sort of critical areas for us is to understand how can we apply math early on to figure out design problems. Um, Plug-in electric cars, uh, our big, big swing nowadays is Chevrolet Volt and the Nissan Leaf. The one major consideration is how is that electricity being produced? So luckily in Ontario and Quebec and the majority of Canada, a lot of it's produced by uh, renewable resources. So we have hydroelectric dams, we have wind farms that produce electricity, but if you're to step into some other parts of North America, for example, Pennsylvania, uh, it's heavily dependent on coal. So that just means you're generating the, the source of emissions, not of the tailpipe, but somewhere upstream. So that's a major consideration that uh, everyone has to factor in when purchasing your next green car, and more particular where they live when they purchase the next green car. You won't be driving your cars in about 20 years from now. Cars will drive themselves, um, which will always be great because then we can go on and do other more important things. Because I'm pretty sure many of us would rather be uh, you know, reading up on the news or chatting to a friend rather than driving. So uh, that'll be a big step in technology. That's one area. Um, the next two areas are sort of uh, intertwined, but uh, there's no silver bullet to this solution of what's the next fuel. It's going to be a combination of natural gas, electricity, um, or, or traditional fossil fuels. It'll depend on what area you live in. So like I said, Electricity, it depends on where you live on, certain fuels are better than others, so I think that'll be the, 
uh, the next big challenge for us is that not everyone will have the same car. Everyone will want to do what works best for them. The third part will be public transit. I think a lot of people need to consider taking um, alternative means, living closer to work, uh, closer to school, um, and avoiding using cars entirely. That way, it'll, it's probably the best way to reduce emissions, <laughs> is to live closer to work. So there's three different approaches. It's, uh, it's going to be an interesting next 20 years. I think uh, the biggest thing, not just EcoCars, but any student team, any organization, wherever you end up being, um, is having good initiative uh, to take the time to actually learn how the systems work. Um, spending the extra hour or two to figure out how to use that software tool, how to use that hand tool, taking the extra initiative. Um, that really sets you apart from your peers and will ultimately give you uh, more than enough unique opportunities to spread your knowledge.